I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education, Baltimore County for June 7, 2018. Earlier this evening, the board convened a closed session in accordance with the Open Meetings Act for the following reason. Uh, B7 to consult with council to obtain legal advice and we convened an administrative function session. The minutes of our closed session may be found on our website at www.bcps.org backslash board backslash minutes backslash. Uh, there's only one item on our agenda this evening and that is consideration of interim superintendent, Mr. Virch. Make a motion. Well, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Birch. Uh, I will move that this board submit uh, the name of Ms. Verlita White to the state superintendent to serve as our interim superintendent for the upcoming school year, effective July 1, 2018. Second. There's a motion and a second. Discussion. Mrs. Miller. I have a motion to amend that the board stipulates that the interim will not be considered for the permanent position next year. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Yes, I'd like to discuss my motion to amend. Um, the most important thing that we can do as a board this year uh, is to um, create the best pool of candidates for next year's selection for the permanent superintendent. And the best way that we can do that is to have a reset for a year um, and choose an interim who will not be seeking the permanent position next year. That will allow internal candidates to feel that they can come forward without having a, um, a sitting interim who is seeking the position that would discourage uh, internal candidates from coming forward, as well as limiting the quantity and quality of external candidates who might come forward. Um, so next year's permanent selection is gonna be much more important than even this selection and it really is incumbent upon this board to do all that we can to assist the incoming board in having a good pool of candidates. The board had substantial discussion about this in closed session. Is there any more discussion at this point? Mrs. Causey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just have to say that I agree with Mrs. Miller. We have a very important decision in front of us and there are other steps that need to be taken, but I will discuss those in a, in a separate motion. Um, but I believe that she's absolutely correct that we need to have not just a leader that some of the board, the majority of the board are comfortable with, but the best leader, the exemplary leader. And given the information that we received where we have 35 internal candidates currently qualified to be superintendent does provide us the opportunity to have any number of candidates as the interim superintendent that would agree to not pursue the permanent job. So that if Mrs. White, as she has expressed multiple times, wants to be the permanent, uh, it would behoove the system and it would behoove her to have a different interim and then a permanent, a fair um, permanent search process could take place. All right, the motion to, uh, is to amend the um, motion to submit Mrs. White's name and it's to um, uh, state that whoever is interim will not be considered for the permanent position. Further discussion, realizing that we've had discussion in closed session, Mrs. Hen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it was the advice of both the state superintendent and the Maryland Association of Boards of Education that this board conduct a full and fair, open, permanent search process. Um, I'm supporting Mrs. Miller's motion um, to limit that the interim superintendent position from 
um, pursuing the permanent process because of what that would do to taint that process. We do need a full and fair open process that we did commit to when we appointed Mrs. White interim superintendent. We committed to ourselves and we committed to the public to do that search, which is why I am supporting this motion um, to create a clean slate um, for next year when this board is tasked with um, pursuing a permanent superintendent. Mr. Virch. Um, thank you, Ed. Um, I um, note that previously a motion had been before this board to uh, appoint Miss Verlita White, our Verlita White, to be the interim superintendent for the upcoming year. I note that two of the members who have just spoken in favor of this amendment, in fact, made and seconded the motion for the interim appointment of Ms. Verlita White for the upcoming year. Now, to hear the same members use words like taint to suggest somehow that the motion that they had previously made for Ms. Verlita White, our Verlita White, to be the interim superintendent for the next year suggests either some sudden change of position or perhaps some other rationale which could be provided. I'm sure it's just as sincere today as the, as the opposing view, the contrary view was some time ago. There's been extensive discussion in closed session. I know the member's position just as I recall it from an earlier time. If the members are not uncomfortable being in contradiction for whatever expedient reason that may be, it is not for me to suggest that they should change their mind at this date. Thanks. Um, Mrs. Causey and then Mrs. Hen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just like to point out that from the date when board members voted for Ms. White to be the interim, we have received two letters from Dr. Karen Salmon, the state superintendent. The first of which states, I have considered the request in light of several factors that are of great concern to me. First is the ethics violation related to Dr. White's failure to disclose outside income she received from consulting work. It is my understanding that the ethics panel also found that she used the prestige of her office in ways that violated ethics law. I consider an ethics violation to be a serious breach of trust with the public in general and with the education community in particular. That breach of trust causes me to pause as I consider whether to approve this appointment. She then went on, in addition, I and the State Board have advocated for an expanded audit of the Baltimore public school procurement process. It is clear that the audit has not yet been completed. I believe that the results of the audit will provide critical facts for me to consider in deciding whether to approve Dr. White as permanent superintendent. So in addition to this letter and another letter that we recently received from Dr. Salmon, over the last several weeks as I have been going to graduations and visiting schools and out in the community, I have heard consistent concern that this board has followed no process for selecting the permanent superintendent and now we are not following any process for selecting an interim superintendent. So for those reasons, I no longer support having an interim superintendent selected with no process. And to Ms. Hen's point, I have from May, Maryland Association Boards of Education, a workshop that they put on for the Board of Education, and it says the purpose is to plan and execute a search process that is thoughtful, responsive, and fair, minimize the possibility of legal challenges as a result of procedural flaws, identify the best leader in your school system. So for these reasons, for the additional input that I've received from multiple sources, in addition to the uh, expertise of Dr. Karen Salmon, I am no longer comfortable having an interim superintendent selected without any process. Right. Is, there any further is there any further discussion on the motion to amend? Yes. Mrs. Hen is next and then Mr. Virch. Yes, to respond to um, my colleague's comment about contradiction. Contradiction was when this board formed a search committee and voted to award a search firm contract and at the same meeting voting to appoint Mrs. White as permanent superintendent. That's a contradiction. 
It's time for this board to use common sense to follow the direction that was provided by the Maryland Association of Boards of Education and the state superintendent by conducting a full and fair, open and inclusive search process, one that excludes the um, interim superintendent, which is the motion that is on the floor. All right. Mr. McDaniels. <clears throat> there have been a lot of comments about um, things that the Maryland Association of Boards of Education advocates. and. In addition to process, which we have, I have not offered any argument to the suggestion that uh, the Board of Education did uh, suggest that a, a full search be conducted. The Maryland Board Association of Boards of Education also advocates that boards act as collective units. This board voted to support Ms. White as a collective unit, um, and and she was confirmed as. As a, as a permanent superintendent and as interim superintendent. There have been, uh, there is a significant uh, difficulty that arises when board members do not act in support of what the collective board did. Um, after that board, that vote was taken, Dr. Salmon received a number of communications that were spurred on by people on this, this particular board. Not only did they not support the will of the board, they acted to, to undermine, actually, the actions that the board has taken. So the fact that we are uh, in a conundrum here is not a, a result of one particular action. The Maryland Boards of Education also supports that local governance rules. This board uh, also studied the ex ethics violation. We had several meetings and several discussions. We had some concerns about it, but then we made a decision after those considerations. Um, I think, as Mr. Young has said earlier, uh, the, the board, the will of the board is being not accepted by uh, some of the board members. The board voted to not only confirm her as interim superintendent, but we also recommended her as permanent superintendent. And I think that is also adding to the confusion about our communications to staff and to the community. Mr. Virch. Thank you, Ed. Uh, just a couple of thoughts. The first is that the board did not at the same meeting uh, both vote for a search contract and uh, vote for uh, Verlita White to be our permanent superintendent. A motion was made that evening. So that's just a minor fact. Secondly, with regard to the state superintendent, the state superintendent for Maryland has shown herself to be statute illiterate and Comar tone deaf. Statute illiterate because the Maryland General Assembly has laid out the checklist for credentialing of permanent superintendents. It's in law, black letter law, not subject to additions at the whim of an executive branch manager. Secondly, Comar tone deaf. It is Comar which indicates how many votes are needed for any local school board to take any action. In this case, a mere majority is needed. In, in this case of Verlita White, twice there were supra majorities, eight out of 12 possible votes. That is particularly noteworthy when we consider that the state superintendent chose not to follow the wishes of a supermajority of the board, but instead, as we understand it, communicate with a distinct minority of the Board of Education for Baltimore County. With regard to the state superintendent's first letter, obviously it was not even reviewed by the competent, professional, career assistant attorney generals in the Department of Education because the state superintendent cited the wrong statute as where her power, her authority, her duties emanate from. She cited a state board statute that dealt with, of all things, disabilities. I note that in her more recent letter, there is no mention made in any Mr. regard. Mr. Chairman, point of order. No mention made this, in this any is regard. This is on my absolutely, motion to amend. Absolutely Please, on could point. We stick to That's that great. point? Absolutely on point. In no regard does the superintendent mention either Mr. ethics. Mr. Chairman, either point of order? E uh, 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 I'm flowing with exactly with what Ms. Hayden are gonna, exactly we are gonna stay on. We're going to stay on point on the motion to amend, and we're going to have a vote on the motion to amend. Correct. Okay. No mention is made of ethics following so on Ms. Hayden's specific Mr. comments. Mr. Chairman? Secondly, um, there is no specific. Wrap, let's let him wrap up his comments. There is no mention made whatsoever 
of audit. Instead, there was mention made of a full and fair search. And this is now the crux. It's about the double standard and the application of let's, a double standard. The double standard being let's that in, I am. I'm, I'm right on point, Ed. And no, Mr. The motion, Birch is the motion, out of the order. The motion to amend He's is, out of order, right, and I'm on. asking we, you to We can preside. have comments. Our chairman. Hold on. Sure. Mrs. Miller, just be patient. The motion to amend is to um, um, uh, amend the motion to appoint, uh, to submit Mrs. White, and the motion to amend is that the interim, whoever it is, will not be considered for the permanent position. Any further discussion? Yes, and point? here's the wrap-up, Ed. The wrap-up is there is no such requirement in state law or in Comar for this contingency as a credentialing for any state super or, or for any consideration by a state superintendent Good. for a local interim superintendent from a local school Thank board. Thank you, Mr. Virch. Is there any other comment on the motion to amend? Mrs. Miller. Mr. Gillis, I think that was entirely Mrs. inappropriate Mrs. for Mr. Virch to take this opportunity to bash our state superintendent. When we're talking process, she is part of the process. Point of order, is this about the amendment? Oh, oh now it's important, okay, I see. Um, so to my amendment, um, I do believe that um, we need that one year reset to get away from recent controversies um, and to avoid the appearance of a coronation. And I believe that it's in the best interest of Ms. White for her, you know, seeking the permanent position next year, if she also takes that year to get away. Um, Vicki Allman just did the very same thing with regards to the county executive position where she could have been coronated and she turned it down and it was a wise decision and I think it would be wise of Ms. White to do the same thing. All right, so the motion to amend all, we need, to, we need to move on. It's 6.10 and we have a graduation at 7. Mrs. Causey. Well, perhaps we should have planned the meeting a little earlier and not we just did. thought we that did plan. in 45. We did, we and, did plan. And not, hold on. We did plan. Excuse me. No, it, no, hold on. Do I have the floor, Mr. No, Chair? not yet. Okay. We did plan the meeting and we identified 45 minutes for closed session discussion. We had this discussion in closed session. Mrs. Causey. Thank you. Yes, 45 minutes, and it's the first meeting specifically set aside to discuss the most vital and urgent issue of selecting the best future leader for BCPS students, teachers, and staff. And um, I am just going to respond to some of the statements that were made. The uh, when we talk about collective will. Is this in the this Please. is uh, this let is her, responding her, to others' comments on the amendment. About the amendment. Do I have the floor, or does Mr. Ufelder have the floor? I, I, Mrs. Causey, I need to, Mrs. Causey, I need you to uh, to address the motion to amend because we need to move on. I'm addressing other comments that you allowed to be made on this motion. Does Mr. You, Ufelder you have the floor, the or do I have the floor, Mr. Gillis? All right, Mrs. Causey, please address the motion to amend. Thank you. So. Mr. McDaniels made the point about the collective will of the board. There is the will of the board. There is also process where this vote of this board has to go to the state superintendent for approval. There is also the discussion of having people go along with decisions that are made because there is a supermajority. Well, I would remind this board and this community that there was a supermajority when Dallas Dance was reappointed with a vote of 10 to two, and I was one of those members that voted against that appointment because at that same time, I did not feel that we had gone through the process, that there were concerns about decision making and concerns about ethics that were not fully addressed by this board, and now we see where we are. So that is relevant to the point of how we hire the most important employee of this organization that provides education and nurturing and a safe environment to 113,000 students. So it's directly on point. Thank you very much. All right, the motion is uh, to uh, limit the uh, interim uh, and not have whoever is appointed interim be considered for permanent superintendent. All in favor of that motion to amend, please raise your hand. The motion fails for Jim, lack of majority. Division. Please call the roll. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Eaton? 
No. Mr. Hayden? Yes. Ms. Penn? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? No. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Stewart? No. Mr. Yolfelder? No. Mr. Birch? Nay. Mr. Young? No. Ms. Schaefer? No. Mr. Gillis? No, the motion fails eight to, the motion to amend fails eight to four. Now the motion uh, on the floor is the motion uh, made by Mr. Stewart to submit Mrs. White to the state superintendent as the next interim superintendent, Mr. Stewart. So to speak to that motion, there was a comment made earlier about trying to find the best person, and uh, we know who that person is as a local school system. We have worked with her for over a year. Um, we are here because of an administrative issue, not because we don't know the caliber and quality of the person um, that we want to lead our system. And to say that that person should take a break or parachute out, um, cool off maybe, um, is preposterous because this isn't politics, this is about kids. And this is about actually leading a system forward in a way that provides stability, continuity, integrity, and trust to this system. She is the right person to do it. It's why we voted as many times as we have to move forward. I think the fight continues um, to have our voice heard in our state and in our county. Um, and I say we, we move on with this issue. Any further discussion before we call the vote on the motion? Mrs. Henn. I share Mrs. Causey's concerns that we have not followed a process and we cannot say that we have found the best superintendent when we have not compared or gone through a, pro a hiring process and looked at any other candidates. We have 35 internal potential candidates who are superintendent qualified, superintendent certified internally, many of whom are homegrown, sit with us um, at these meetings every week, work beside us every day of the year, that have been on this job multiple years, some longer than Mrs. White, and we are saying that, sorry, we're not giving you a chance. We are not opening the door and even considering you for this opportunity. What does that say for our system when we say, sorry, there's no opportunity for forward growth because we've already decided who we want for this position without looking at anyone else? Now, when we had, um, when we appointed Mrs. White, we had a very short runway to do so. We had over a year to conduct a full search, and this board did nothing. And now we're at the ninth hour again, and we're saying, well, we've got our, our the best candidate. How can we say that in good conscience, having not gone through a full search with full public input and considered any other candidate? We're saying that, sorry, our 34 other internal candidates who are superintendent certified are not qualified. We know that they're not better than Mrs. White. How do we know? We work beside them. They have not had an opportunity to apply for the position because it has not been posted. We post every other position within BCPS, but not the most important one, the leader of our system. Mr. Birch. Uh, thank you, Ed. I note that my colleague, uh, again, fails to recall her specific uh, motion in support thereof. That, inter that the interim superintendent for the Baltimore County Public Schools be our Verlita White. No mention was made of any other candidates, whether internally or externally, whatever their credentialing may have been. I would then note, importantly, that if in fact credentialing is important and there's 35 names, that credentialing comes from state law which our very own state superintendent has chosen not to follow. That double standard to allow the appointment of a Howard County superintendent without any sort of natural search, a full and fair search. No full and fair search was ever suggested by you for an interim superintendent when you made the motion when we were voting earlier this year to now say we have to stop again, there's the reason we have delays, and that is why we are. Because of the need to have a vote and to have a majority and make a decision, it is when those numbers are at that point to suggest now that the process, which had been agreed to be a three-prong approach, once a majority of members coalesced around one of the three approaches of that process, you now disagree with that particular uh, approach and that process. Those are my remarks. Right. Mrs. Causey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to make an amendment to the motion that before any offer is made, before any vote is taken on an interim superintendent, 
that we proceed with a normal human resources process where we will post the job opening for interim superintendent, that then the board will review those resumes. The board will have to schedule additional administrative sessions to do the due diligence that's necessary to pick the best leader for the coming year and that we will review those resumes that we will select candidates to interview i would suggest at least three but that can be open to the number of um, can, uh, candidates that we receive and that we will interview them and then have another meeting we will have to schedule an open meeting at the end of june in order to um, vote in public on the final appointment and contract for the interim Is there a second to Mrs. Causey's motion to amend? Second. All right, I'll remind the board before we open it up for comment that we had a lengthy discussion about this motion to amend in closed session, uh, and it is 619, and we have a, a graduation at 7 p.m. Mrs. Causey. I would like to say that we received additional information, and I have been receiving quite a bit of input throughout uh, the county and in, in a number of ways about the concerns of this board not following any process that's typical of human resource uh, policy and procedure, especially in light of the controversy that we've gone through this year with leadership. I would also um, like to say that it was just recently that we received the list of names of 35 qualified internal candidates who could very quickly go through this process with us where we could determine not the interim superintendent that the majority are comfortable with, but that is in fact the best leader for the future of 113,000 students and our 9,000 teachers. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. Let's be very clear that we did not receive a list of candidates all seeking this job as suggested by Ms. Causey right then and at other times. This is a list of people who, based off of their sheer qualifications, in fact the qualifications that the state superintendent is purportedly supposed to review in that provision would qualify to be a superintendent for our system. Uh, it is different than people affirmatively asking uh, to be a superintendent of our school system, number one. Number two, this board was not oblivious to other people existing in the world that might want to do this job or be able to do this job. We made a conscious, purposeful decision over the course of many months and after hearing many emails and opinions and conversations and meetings and discussion. Um, this to suggest that we have to uh, go back to this discussion, this facade um, that we didn't know and that our process is still flawed because it didn't uh, result in the outcome you want uh, is, is nonsense. The motion is to amend the motion to submit Mrs. White's name, uh, to delay, to post the uh, opening and uh, interview candidates. Is there further discussion on that? Mr. Hayden. Uh, would like to at least take exception with Mr. Stewart's remarks about how involved the board was. Maybe there were a couple people involved, but certainly many of us were not involved. That is not a process. That is not the process that boards go through. And I think quite simply what we're looking for is a process that most people would consider logical and reasonable to do something uh, so that we can get a candidate who will be the best candidate for the boys and girls of Baltimore County so that we can move forward with education where our children are properly educated. Um, and I think that taking any other course uh, other than putting this particular uh, motion forward and then opening up to candidates uh, to see who is out there who might be interested. Uh, Mr. Stewart made a point that they did not express interest. It's very difficult to get people to express interest when there's somebody at the top job and saying, gee, should I apply for that job? Uh, that's the way it works in organizations. Uh, uh, maybe lawyers don't get involved in that kind of thing, but those of us who worked in organizations do. You know how that goes where people just really don't accept things, but they're afraid to say anything. So they don't step forward. Ms. Mrs. Miller, and then Mrs. Miller, then Mr. Stewart, Mr. Young, we'll, then we'll call the question on the motion to amend. Mrs. Miller. Um, 
it is quite controversial, really, and not at all a given that uh, Ms. White is the most qualified, given that that selection has failed to garner the support of one-third of our board. Typically, it's very desirable to have full board support. In addition, we've had numerous stakeholders come forward uh, to express a different point of view as well. Uh, and then finally, to have that uh, selection be overturned in the process by our state superintendent is about the most embarrassing way that this could have ended. And it ended that way because we did not have a proper process. Mr. Stewart, then uh, Mr. Young. So I, I will be quick, um, but these are the words, in fact, of our state superintendent, that if the board requests such appointment of Dr. White, she meant Ms. White, as permanent superintendent, I would approve a second interim appointment for Dr. White. So I would like to make the point that even our state superintendent recognizes the caliber of this person. There are issues that caused her to pause, but clearly she is telling us that that is something worthwhile of our consideration. Mr. Young. To remain clear, we are going for an, the appointment of an interim superintendent. Um, the discussion keeps leaning towards the superintendent position. Right now, the first step is to get an interim superintendent who's on the job July 1st. Earlier this year, we, we attempted a process with seeking out search firms so that we could go through and have a search process. Now, the, the discussion about the 35, of which Ms. White is included, and other searches that other districts have done, those people who have applied have been kept confidential until the end because they did not want their current employer to know. So for those people who are in the system currently, if, even if Ms. White does sit at the top, there's confidentiality. So they cannot, they would not necessarily be excluded. Going back to, um, I believe someone said that a third of the board does not support Okay, that's 67% of the board does support. Cecil County, we were told that they had a decision, three to two, but the two dissenters said they were going to support the decision of the board. All right, the motion is to amend to um, post this job uh, and interview, and then further discussion on this? We, remember, we've had discussion, Mrs. Causey. Just to respond to Mr. Stewart, if he could just read the last line of uh, the state superintendent's letter that he started. Read that. He, he doesn't have to read that. It's the one that says that she would also approve a different okay. interim If you want me to talk, I'm going to call the vote. So. All right. So, um, Mr. Mr. Ulfutter, then Mrs. Henn. I haven't said anything, but I just want to, uh, to remind the board and the public uh, that Mrs. White received support from over, we got a petition the, a month or so ago, 850 educators. We've had unions support her, come here and testify. We've had the su students support her. We've had numerous community groups support her. We've had numerous letters of support. Uh, I would say that that represents the public. And the handful or so letters that we've received in opposition uh, certainly don't outweigh all that. And in addition, if you all remember, we did have a public meeting uh, at Carver uh, where this was all discussed publicly. People got up and, and uh, discussed the pros and cons and so forth and so on. So I, I think we had a pretty good uh, uh, open public uh, selection. Mrs. Henn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This has been and always has been about the process or lack of process. And you've heard that word used a lot. And we heard from the Maryland Association of Boards of Education, direct quote, that it would be highly unusual for a school district not to conduct a search for a superintendent. Highly unusual. 
okay. when they met with us to discuss that. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I think I have the floor. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel. All right. I'm so, finished. are we ready? So, how about if we how about if we call the roll on the motion to amend? I would just like to say that over the recent past, what has increased is controversy, not consensus. Point of order. So all of the Point support of that Mr. Uefelder points to has been in the past, and Point increasingly of order. Right. it's right. been right. greater concern for the future of the school system. Right. So the, you're the first to call the roll. She asked you, do you vote yes or no on the motion to amend? I'm voting yes to support right. my motion okay. to do a proper process. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, to do our due diligence as a board. Mr. McDaniel? No. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Stewart? No. Mr. Yulefelder? No. Mr. Birch? Nay, so that we can move our system forward. Mr. Young? No. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Gillis? No, the motion fails for a lack of majority. Now the motion on the table is the original motion by Mr. Stewart, seconded by Mr. Virch, to submit Mrs. White to the state superintendent as interim superintendent. Discussion, Mr. Stewart. I would call this vote. All we right. have had the discussion. All right, would you please call the roll? Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Causey, I, I there's do have a, another the, motion no, he to called make. the question. He called the question. The motion on the table is to submit Mrs. White as state superintendent to the end of superintendent. Okay, well, just to let you know, I'll be making a motion after this vote, please. This no. is a vote to call the question, correct? No. no Don't do, we, do have we have to, to call, vote do we have to call vote? the question? Yes. The motion to call the question then, needs to be a second. There's no debate, and then there's a two-thirds vote. For okay. Debate. Is there a second on the motion to call the question? Second. All right. Now, no debate. Vote. Call the roll. This is to, this is to move the previous question. To move the previous question. Uh, this, this is to end debate. This is to, to end call debate. The question. Okay. Ms. Causey? I vote no to calling the question. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Mr. Yulefelder? Yes. Mr. Birch? No. Mr. Young? Yes. 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 So it's seven to five. All right. So discussion continues. Uh, any further discussion on the motion to submit? Can any other discussion? Can I have a, re a recall, please. I, I don't remember exactly what I voted. I'm not sure. Um, the five that voted to keep the discussion going were Mr. Hayden, Mrs. Miller, Mrs. Hen, Mrs. Causey, and Mr. Virch. Okay. Thank you. Um, Further discussion on the motion uh, that is to submit Mrs. White as state superintendent. Mrs. Causey. I would like to amend the motion that the contract that is negotiated for the interim superintendent is includes that there will be no outside work, that all associations will be disclosed and approved by the board in advance, that travel will be approved by the full board in writing in advance. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The motion carries. Now the motion uh, is to submit Mrs. White as state superintendent, uh, to the state superintendent as interim superintendent. Please call the roll. Ms. Causey. No. No. Ms. Hen? For lack of process, no. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Ms. Miller? No. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Mr. Yulefelder? Yes. Mr. Birch? I vote aye, and all of those awaiting Kenwood graduates thank the board for this coming to a vote at the time it is, so that those of us going will be, get over, will be able to get over there. Thank you. Mr. Young? Yes. Yes. Yes, the motion carries eight to four. Um, move. Um, move for adjournment. Uh, there's a motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries, we're adjourned. For who's opposed? Who's opposed?